Are you guys having a good time? Yeah. Like this is fantastic. I was at Impressions a couple weeks ago and that was cool because it's like everything, but just DTF, it's awesome to see the turnout of folks. Um, I, I teach a uh, boot camp uh, once a month at our location here in Gilbert. And the thing that I get most excited about talking with people is just the opportunity and the possibilities with DTF. Like there is room to grow. Like yes, Etsy stores that sell DTF transfers, that's pretty saturated. <laughs> but outside of that, there is so much opportunity. And so it's, it's awesome seeing people come into this industry that had nothing to do with it. It's awesome to see traditional screen printers that are diving into it. It's just, there's a lot to be excited about. And as the industry is maturing and we're seeing more maybe consistency come into the industry, that's just gonna do nothing but make things better for all of us. So uh, my name is Jeremy. Um, I'm Jeremy with DTF Superstore. We joked around about my business card, if there should be a title or a last name on it. It's funny, Adrian, love you to death. It's actually pronounced Pales. It doesn't look like it. I'll be the first to admit it does not look like that. But um, yeah, so I'm with DTF Superstore. I'm kind of a little bit of a lot of things there. I do the training, our boot camps. I do a lot of the testing. So when we want to learn a new product or find something out, um, I'm the one that goes and messes with it. We were testing our new dryer. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to go look at that, but I was testing our new dryer the other day. Uh, Melanie likes to call it the shaker baker. Um, but uh, we, I was running it for about two and a half hours and then I decided, you know what? I'm gonna just leave the transfers inside the oven with it on, sitting there to see how long it lasts. I was hoping to melt them. I thought that'd be fun. It made nice content for YouTube, but um, it did nothing. Like they sat there, they trans I, they looked fine. They came out, they pressed on the shirt just fine. So um, I love testing stuff, finding the limits. And that's what brings me to this lovely halftone class. And if you've seen, most of you have probably seen my video. It's by far the most viewed on our YouTube channel by a country mile. And it's because we found some ways to do it that weren't traditional, like most people, most people did halftones. So uh, let's, let's get into the talk. I will have time for questions at the end. I'm happy to answer whatever question you guys got. I also have samples. So I'm not just gonna tell you guys about what we're doing. I'm gonna actually show you guys, let you touch and feel and understand why we would choose stuff. But uh, so the problem, what, what are we solving with halftones? The first problem is the plasticky hand feel. Like how many people have heard the complaint that DTF has a plasticky hand feel or feels like vinyl? Like we all hear it, we get it. Like it is definitely a piece we're working through. But one of the, one of the things is that yes, you can mitigate that hand feel a little bit with better inks, better film, better printer settings, combination of those things, you can. But the graphic is what makes the biggest effect by far. So a lot of folks will do some kind of knockout. So I wanna encourage you guys, when you're doing a graphic, to do some kind of knockout. Basically allow the shirt to show through. And I'm gonna pass this around to you guys. This is just a simple knockout. You can feel the difference. There's these printed at the same time with the exact same settings. And all I did was knock out the black. So feel free to pass it around. You guys will actually see how big of a difference just knocking like 10% of the ink out did to it. Um, obviously working with vector files, you can do color knockouts like that real easily. You just select the little air, get rid of it. It's super easy to do. But if you're dealing with raster images, or something that has gradients or anything like that, that's your next problem. Semi-transparent pixels. Um, designer folks, they love to design stuff that looks good on a screen and it never prints out nicely because you get like flames or maybe somebody does a smoke effect and it's all this transparent stuff. Maybe they've uh, done some drop shadows. Who gets drop shadows and like is in misery? Uh, glows, all that kind of stuff, all those design things create semi-transparent pixels. And semi-transparent pixels do not work with DTF because you have to put a white underbase under it. And so what ends up happening is you get this washed out look and I'll actually show you a really good example of that in just a minute. Uh, the next thing, the next problem is the AI artwork. How many of you guys have been asked to print some AI artwork recently? So we're gonna see more and more AI artwork as we move forward as more people are utilizing the technology and there's a couple telltale signs of AI artwork aside from people having eight fingers. Um, there's actually a graphic I'll show you guys which is an eagle with like four talons or five talons, it's pretty cool. Um, but AI artwork 
doesn't usually have super defined lines. It has some, but the details tend to kind of blend together weirdly. And anytime you get blends, that's going to be absolutely miserable to try to do any kind of knockout to. And so the solution to all these problems is half toning. More specifically, and I've debated about this for a long time, of stop calling it just half toning, it's a half tone color knockout. So we're not just simply half toning the image, we're actually using it as a technique to knock out ink from the design. Um, most often it's performed on a black shirt. Most of us are probably mostly printing, printing black shirts, but we have come up with a workflow that we can do it on any color shirt, literally any color. You can do white, tan, green, whatever. Um, and I'll show you guys how we do that a little later on as it only adds like one or two steps to the process. So if somebody comes to you and they're like, please break copyright laws and print this poster shirt, it'll be awesome. <laughs> You can, I'm just not, you could, I'm just not saying you should. But if you were to get this graphic and you tried to print it, like, would you guys try to color knock out? Would you just try to print it straight up? All I know is it's gonna feel like a big old sticker on that shirt if you try to print that, especially with all this black, because black is the thickest ink. Uh, no matter what you do, it just, the more, the darker the ink, the thicker it's gonna feel, period. Um, so traditionally, you would see people half tone a graphic like this, where they half tone kind of everything. And I don't know about you guys, but that doesn't inspire me with like vibrancy and brilliance. And I actually printed this exact half tone here. So not super brilliant, not super vibrant. Um, it is ridiculously soft, but that's because it created a bunch of halftone circles literally everywhere, so I'll let you guys take a look at that. But I didn't like that, that didn't inspire me. Also, if somebody sends me a graphic and I try to give them something that doesn't look very much like the original, they're gonna be like, thanks, next. They're not gonna love it. So what we wanna do is create a workflow that kept it looking like the original file, but allowed us to have some fades into the shirt color and all that kind of stuff which is what we have here. And this is halftone knocked out, but we kind of blow out some of the colors a little bit more, so it's not as soft of a hand feel, but it still feels a lot better than a giant block of ink on your shirt, because that is just miserable. So this process of like figuring out how to get away from that and get to something that looks more like the original took months of like trial and error, printing stuff, trying it again, adjusting this level, adjusting that setting. And it was just a constant battle to try to find out what would work right on the printers, right? Because ultimately it can look fine on the computer, but if it doesn't print out nicely, it's kind of pointless. So, um, so yeah, so we, we started working into some of these things. Um, this particular graphic here is a PNG that someone had. And I don't know if you guys seen the Facebook group or the video, that's what he got when he printed a PNG image. So what's happening here is everything here, like, like literally all of this is semi-transparent pixels. We have a little tool we're working on where it'll actually show you the semi-transparent pixels in your file, and this thing lights up. It's like all red semi-transparent. And so when the printer goes to print it, it looks like that. And if you guys are on our Direct-to-Film Facebook group, um, Peter posted this, he's over in Europe, and he posted this image and said, what am I doing wrong? And 90% of the comments were something wrong with this printer. Yep. Your spot color's off, your alignment's off, you're using too much white underbase, all these things. And with full comments, I, I love the Facebook group because it is awesome that there's a forum for you guys to share ideas and stuff like that. Sometimes it's a little sideways. And this was one of those cases. I said, I messaged him, I'm like, will you send me the file? And I will take a look at it and see what's going on. And it literally was just the file. And we've had, we've had uh, our techs out installing printers and they're convinced that their printer, that our tech didn't do a good job. And I asked my tech, I'm like, send me his file. And I opened it up and it's semi-transparent pixels everywhere. So. Um, Peter had this graphic, he sent it to me, and one of the things, and we'll cover that in a little bit, but you need to have a background layer. You can't just take a straight PNG with a bunch of transparency around it. You can't half tone that without some kind of background layer. So this is what it should actually look like and actually does look like when you print it. 
Um, uh, so I'll show you guys part of that workflow. Uh, the next thing is um, a graphic like this. How many of you would want to print that? If you saw this and you're like, customers like, please make this, how many guys would be excited about printing something like this? We got two guys, th three people. That's, that's, that's a really high percentage, guys, for in this room. Um, with half toning, we can print this. Easily, repeatable, and actually make it look really good. Um, AI artwork like this. I'm actually gonna show you guys how we half tone this thing. It is beautiful, it feels amazing. Um, also, if you're a big America fan and you like your eagles having really jacked up feet because it's AI generated, um, this is stuff we can half tone. Uh, we've got these demo shirts I think are in our booth. Um, I'll actually hand this one out real quick. Oh, no. oh they're both there. I'm the video guy and I was about to talk without the mic on myself. So this is that eagle. One of these is half-toned to knock the colors out. This other one, I wanted to show you guys what it would look like if you just tried to knock out the black. And the reason it doesn't work very good to try to knock out the black where there's fades like that is that threshold where it stops it, it creates really hard lines. It just, it doesn't look very clean. All right, so we're gonna walk through the steps of the process, but before we go through that, I'm gonna give you guys some like tips and best practices, like no matter what you're doing with halftones, no matter what graphic you're getting, follow these steps. First thing is this is a Photoshop only workflow. I'm sorry if you don't have Photoshop. Corel Draw users, I love you, but Photoshop is and Canva users, the door's back there. I'm just kidding, I'm <laughs> kidding. Canva is fine for social media posts. Um, but this is a Photoshop only workflow. We've not found another software that can do what we're doing like this. Um, your files need to be 300 DPI and the size you print. Do not half tone and then resize because it's gonna create dots that are too small to print. It's gonna create little haloed, semi-transparent pixels. Even if you turn off anti-aliasing, we should reduce those, those semi-transparent, it's gonna create them. Um, so if you're gonna do multiple shirt sizes, you need to half tone those individually. Uh, your printer must be aligned accurately. So if you have a two head printer, it's got a CMYK and a white print head, you have to make sure it's dialed in. Like some of you guys like to fudge by like having like a choke of five or something like that because then your stuff's not uh, aligned perfectly, it covers your butt. The problem is, is for half tones, you have to set your choke super low, like two, if you're on CAD link, which is only two pixels. Uh, otherwise you'll lose too many of the dots. And uh, transparent PNGs have to have a background there. I mentioned that before. You can't just take a, like a flame PNG or like that guy's graphic. You can't just take that PNG and work with it. You have to give some kind of background. Otherwise, it confuses the halftone process. So we're going to jump into Photoshop. And I'm going to show you guys how we do this. Now, don't stress about remembering the steps, OK, guys? Because you won't remember them. I have a video on my YouTube, so go to DTF Superstore on YouTube. There will be a video, a couple videos, on half toning. That's where you can go and rewatch the steps. So as opposed to like worrying about remembering all the steps, I want you guys to like pay attention to like what we're doing, why we're doing certain steps in it. It'll make like kind of understand the thought process behind it before we before you stress about worrying about the steps. So let's start with this uh, AI generated graphic. I know some of you guys don't like some of the dark stuff, but this is a graphic somebody brought to boot camp. So something like this, you just can't color knock it out. So basically, and in this case, we've got a full graphic. We don't have any like PNG semi trans or fully transparent stuff in it. So we can just move forward. So basically the first step in it, is make sure your image is 300 DPI. And this is a step I always forget. I can't tell you how many times, how many times I do it in boot camp, guys? Like four or five times I did it and didn't check my resolution. And yeah, I don't like live streams because then I make mistakes and I can't edit. I love video because then when I make a mistake, I just edit it and you guys never know the difference. It's great. Um, so we want to make sure we're at 300 DPI. And a lot of stuff, Photoshop and a lot of other programs will default saving things to 72 DPI because that's what kind of screens function at. So anyway, so 300 DPI, 11 inches wide, first step. Now, 
I'm going to right click on the layer, and I hope you guys can see that okay. Yeah. Um, this room can't, I'm going to stand like this now. Um, duplicate layer. And we're not going to duplicate in the same document. We're actually going to create a new document because we want to do all the half toning work in a separate document. So now I've got the separate document. The first step is to go to grayscale. So image mode grayscale because half toning only works in grayscale, which was the really big issue for us trying to figure out how to half tone on colored shirts. Was like, how do we make it think black? Because in the concept of half toning, if it's black, it disappears. It's not going to show through. If it's white, it's going to show through all the way. Any amount of gray is going to be varying amounts of half tone dots. And this, this next step is the one that all the other half tone tutorials ignore or skip. Which basically what it's going to do here is this spot here, this here, this, and this are going to get no half tone dots. Everything else in here will get half toned. And that just takes away all of the vibrancy. So our step that we added was an adjustment. And so if you go to image adjustments levels, this little diagram here is showing basically the spread of pixel image from white to black. See, there's a lot of black in this thing, not a lot of white, and everything in here is going to get some amount of halftone. So what we do is we bring the white down and what we, we say blow out the image, but if you watch what goes on here, it gets really, really bright, and then it starts to lose some detail, but that's okay, because these white areas are what are not going to get half-toned, so it's going to keep her, like this little flower here, it's going to keep this color that was down here, and then anything black will disappear, anything gray will have some amount of half-tones. So that'll help us keep the picture bright. But what we found is if we don't choke the black up a little bit, then it doesn't actually knock hardly anything out of it. So we actually want to bring the black triangle here up a little bit. And see like this kind of area here where it's kind of muted a little bit? That's something else we learned from testing and playing and printing it, is those kind of darker edges would always come, would always print through kind of muted, and they never looked quite right. Even if we were trying to match it with a shirt color, it never quite looked right. So we just learned to choke up on the black a little bit to knock a little bit more of it out. This step here, this one step here, is the one that you will play with, and it will be different for every single image. Like, there's no, like, Click one button, it does the whole thing for you because it depends on the graphic. I'm going to show you some other graphics and you'll see our values here are going to be wildly different. So it just depends on the makeup of the original graphic on how much you're going to adjust these around. Then I'm going to click OK and I'm going to go Image Mode Bitmap. Now what a bitmap image is, is it's just black and white. So just black and white pixels. And this screen here is um, basically we're telling Photoshop how to handle the grays. There are other modes like 50% um, threshold. What that would do is you've got white over here and black over here and right in the middle would be like even sized dots. As it gets closer to, the, as the gray gets closer to the black, on this threshold it would just slam everything black or everything white depending on which side of the middle. With the halftone screen, instead of slamming it all that way, what we're telling it is as you move away from black, start adding white dots in very small. And as you move toward the white, the dots get bigger. And when you hit the middle point, the dots of black and white should be equal. And as you go closer to the white side, the white dots get bigger and the black dots get smaller. So that's, what, that's how it's processed. We're, we're telling it we want to use dots or a halftone screen to handle the grays. And this is, for a lot of screen printers, like people that have done screen printing before are somewhat familiar with halftones to a degree. Um, definitely for a lot of DTF producers that maybe aren't traditional like screen printers or something like that, this is like, tends to be a little bit, a little bit outside of the comfort zone. But we're gonna hit that. That's gonna tell it we wanna use halftone screens to do this. This next screen here was also a lot of testing. <laughs> um, the shape, 
You've got multiple shapes you can use. You can use diamonds, you can use circles, you can use lines. Um, we, we were judging the t-shirt uh, printing contest yesterday, and there was one person who used uh, half tone, but they did lines, which I've not seen that done a lot because it creates a little more of a stylistic effect, but it did create a lot softer shirt. So you can do lines and things like that, but what I found is that the round ones allow me to make the graphic look like the original. Like when I show you, when I toggle it on and off, you guys are gonna see very subtle change between them. And that's my goal. My goal is I want it to look like the original graphic they sent me. So the frequency, this up here, your lines per inch, this is gonna dictate like how often that dot size changes. The bigger the number, the smaller dots it will create. So the problem there is if you go too high of a number, which makes too small a dots, not only are the printed pixels too small for your printer in some cases, but the holes that it creates to create that softer hand feel are so small, they don't actually give you a softer hand feel. We actually filmed the video this week about how small you can print. And at one pixel spacing, you can't tell that there's actually a space in there. You have to go to like three pixels before you can tell there's a gap. And so it's not gonna create any softer if you do too small. So we tested, I literally tested from frequency of 10 all the way up to 70. And 70 was like basically printing the same image. 10 was so big, it looked funky. So at 300 pixels per inch, 30 to 35 is a really good number to give you a result that looks like the original. The angle, basically what this is doing is the halftone dot, the next one that it prints will be at a different angle. So this is the dot, uh, 22 is like over here. 45 degrees would be here, zero would be here, 90 would be here, 90 and zero look identical to each other. But what we found in our testing is for something like this that's kind of got more natural lines or like a smoke or a flame or something like that, if you did 45 degrees, your eyes would see the pattern immediately. Even, even though the graphic wasn't straight lines, your eye would be drawn to that 45 degree pattern and it just lost the effect. And so what we found is that 22, and we tried like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, we have played with a bunch of them, and 22 was the one that most consistently, you, your eye didn't see that pattern. And so these recommendations, obviously you guys can try different settings, but these recommendations are based off of us testing it and playing with it and seeing what works, what doesn't work. And uh, so 22 degrees, if you're doing, uh, let's say you're trying to half tone a drop shadow or you're trying to half tone like a neon glow on like a neon graphic or something like that, those ones, because they have straight lines, you want to do it 45 degrees. Because if you do the 22 degree, it creates this weird like wave pattern. It just, it looks funky. Um, if that's the look you're going for, go for it. But in our experience, 45 is the best for straighter lines. 22 is best for more natural movement. So much so that there's only like two cases I ever use anything other than 22. Because most of the time I'm just trying to make a graphic look and feel better. So I'm gonna hit okay, 30 frequency, 22 angle. And then you won't notice much change. I'm gonna zoom in and show you guys. So if we look, I'm used to using a mouse. <laughs> so instead of the fade, we've got all these half, see how small they get and they get bigger and bigger as it gets brighter. You'll also notice like where there isn't a gradient, where it's just like a hard line, you are getting some half tone dots and that's just cause it's a color that ended up in that gray spectrum and that's totally fine. So now what I'm gonna do, and again, all these steps are on that YouTube video. If my fingers will play with the trackpad. Uh, command A selects everything. Command C copies it. And then we're gonna go back into our original file and we're gonna create a layer mask. How many guys have used layer masks much? Beautiful. If, you, if you're afraid of them, get to know them. They will be your best friend in Photoshop, I promise. Uh, I used to not like them. I've been using Photoshop since like 2001, and I only started using layer masks like a couple years ago, so don't, don't be afraid. But anyway, I'm gonna add a layer mask, and then hold down Option or Alt. If you're on a PC, it's gonna be Alt. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it's gonna be Option. And click on the layer mask. And now I'm gonna paste the halftone screen that I made, and there's what it does to it. Now you're like, Jeremy, that looks like crap. 
and you would be correct. So let me put the shirt color behind it, whoops, just so we can preview what it's gonna look like. Obviously, this is the file you wanna print, <laughs> but we're gonna preview it uh, by adding a black layer behind it, and that's kinda what it looks like. Now, I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see better. I'm gonna zoom into that same area we looked at on the halftone screen. Let's see. Come on. Okay, so looking, looking in that area right there. So this is where a lot of, contrast isn't great on this screen, I apologize, but I hope you guys can see the dots are going on in there. I'm gonna hit shift and just disable the layer mask. Maybe I'm gonna do that, oh my goodness. This is what I get for trying, I'm like, I'll just use a laptop with a trackpad, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be great. Decent, there we go. Okay, this is the halftone screen off, so now this one did dim it a decent amount. So you see how it's a little bit, a little bit brighter there? But when I zoom out and take kind of the whole image in, it really does not like my fingers for pinching and zooming. So off, on. So in this particular one, definitely the background is wispy. I maybe wouldn't pull my black down quite so much. That's maybe what I would go back in and redo that layers setting. So let's say, let's say I don't like this. Let me do that again. So I don't like this result. It's too dark for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into this file and I'm gonna go Command Z and back up a couple steps and just go back and redo the layers. So I'm gonna do layer, or sorry, image adjustment levels bring my white down like I did before, but I'm not gonna bring my black up quite so far. I'm gonna bring it to like there. And now go through those same step, image, mode, bitmap. It can go quite quickly when you're used to doing it and not explaining every step, so it, you'll, you'll get faster as you do it more often. Command A, Command C to select it all and then copy it. And then Option or Alt, click on the layer mask paste the new one in, and that's what the new one looks like. And I'm gonna to toggle that back and forth. So that's the original, that's with it half-toned. And what I want you guys to see is how little ink this is gonna use. So first of all, we wanna half-tone because it's gonna feel better. Like, it's gonna feel a million times better and you're gonna get uh, attention because you're making shirts that feel awesome. But you're gonna use like 10% of the ink that you would have if you tried to print that graphic normally. And that saves you guys money, which is fantastic. We like saving money. So literally that, like this part, this part, and this are the only things that have a lot of ink. So I'm gonna close this one out and I'm gonna pull up a different one and we're gonna do that. So actually let's, let's do the alligator. So we're gonna do the green shirt, okay? Here it is. FYI, half toned, half toned on a green shirt. So I'm gonna pass this around so you guys can take a look at it and see while I'm talking about it. In the case of, like let's say this didn't have a green background, um, we would just wanna add the shirt color as the background color. That's the only real step. And so whether you guys just pick a shirt, a color that's close to the shirt or you wanna use your little NYX scanner to find out exactly what the color is, you can do that. Um, but in this workflow, the only difference that we add to it is we're gonna add a layer that is the color we're knocking out. So in this case, instead of black, I'm gonna make it this green color. So I just eyedropper it in there. Whoops, Jeremy did not create a new layer first. There we go. Okay, so now I've got this green layer over it. And we mentioned before, Black gets rid of it, right? When we're half toning, if it's black, it's getting rid of it. If it's white, it's there. So how do we make this green behave like a black? We use a difference blend mode. And what I'm, I'm gonna do this, because th this is the only step that's like a little bit uh, destructive. Um, we are gonna duplicate that layer, but uh, just to save it. And then we have to merge these top two layers. So basically what we've done now is it's gonna take everything that's black, it's gonna get rid of it. And everything that's not, I'll show you guys when we go to grayscale, it actually works quite well. And we've done this with beige shirts 
We've done this with green, red, blue, like we've tried it with about six or seven purple. Um, the purple came out kind of funky, but um, it's working well on any color. So don't be afraid if somebody is like, hey, we've got a VBS for our church this summer and it's a giant flame logo that has like 80% 8, of its semi-transparent pixels and we want it on a blue shirt. You can do it. Like, don't be afraid. Um, so I'm gonna merge these two layers together. And then we're going to do the steps we did before. We're going to go duplicate layer into a new document. And the rest of these steps are the same as we did before. So image mode grayscale. Yes, discard the color information. Image adjustments levels. And again, look, look how little comes on this white. And we know that white is the only thing that's going to get no halftone dots put in it. So I'm going to bring that white way, 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 way down. And then I know from having played with this image is I want these black areas of the of the kind of the foliage behind him I want those to be like kind of knocked out a little bit more so I'm going to bring that black up a bit and again this is a finesse thing this this step here is where all of the like try it out see what it looks like go back and redo it um, but I'm going to go with that then again image mode bitmap Okay, <laughs> I did it. I forgot to check that it was 72 pixels per inch, not 300. My apologies. <sighs> I love YouTube and editing out all of this stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna back up a couple steps. First thing you wanna do when you open up an image is make sure it's 70 or it's 300 pixels per inch. Goodness. I've literally done this workflow I can boot camps alone like probably 30 or 40 times and how many times I've done in videos and on live streams and I still do it every single time. Anyway, all right, go through all those steps. Add the color layer that's green, duplicate this guy. Also, if you don't know shortcuts, learn your shortcuts. It goes so much faster. And also don't have a mic in your hand so you can actually use two hands instead of just one hand. All right difference there we go merge those guys together oh, come on I almost want to like grab my mouse is my right clicking just not working now there we go duplicate layer to a new image image mode grayscale discard image adjustments levels by the time I do this enough times you'll be able to like recite it with me <laughs> image mode bitmap all right there we go image mode bitmap again all this stuff is pretty standard for us so okay okay command a to select it all command c to copy it go back to the original now do not put your halftone screen on this ugly thing hide that and we're gonna put the halftone screen on the original image so I'm gonna create the layer mask Option or Alt, and click on it, paste it, and there we are. And if we zoom in, we're gonna see that the green, like in his face and stuff like that's half-toned. If we go and add that background layer like we did before, always, always use a background layer to test. Anytime, even if you're just doing a simple color knockout, just always put that background layer in to see if you're in the right, like it's looking correct. Oh, this is my favorite part of this, is this smoke right here. Because that is always awkward as anything. I'm just going to use two fingers, and I'm going to, the editors are going to hate me, and it might be me. So, um, there we go. Look at that. So the smoke actually has that fade around it, which gives it that wispy look. If I put that background layer in that's the green, put it behind it, that's what it's going to look like, guys. And that allows you to half tone on any color shirt you want to, literally any color shirt. So even if you want to take like a PNG flame that was on a blue shirt, it works fine. If you have a drop shadow, we're still working on the workflow for the drop shadow because really in those cases, you only want to half tone the drop shadow. It's actually really easy if there's something that got half-toned you didn't want to get half-toned. Like let's say you've got a logo in there and for whatever reason it picked up one of the colors and tried to half-tone it. 
you can go into your layer mask, so alter option and click on the layer mask, and all you need to do to make that not halftone, like let's say this spot right here I didn't want halftoned, I literally just go in there and color it white. So if I make this white now, well, except I want to use the pencil, not the marker tool. There we go. My wife's in here. Hey, honey, the next time I say it's going to be a good idea to use my laptop, tell me I'm wrong. Uh, let's see. The right click is just not working on this thing. There we go. Okay. Now if I go back in and click off of it, that spot you will see is now not half toned at all. So if there's some area you need to clean up that needs to not have the half tone, you just go into the layer mask and just, if you make it white, it's gonna appear. Or if there's something you didn't want to be there, you wanna get rid of it, make it black and it will disappear. So that's how you can half tone on any, any color shirt. Um, I do have a couple of other demos of some stuff that we half toned. This one here is a little Stranger Things poster. FYI, this works really, really good on movie posters, which again, copyright laws, you know, whatever. <laughs> but for personal, use. for personal use only. Oh, they didn't see, I was winking to them. Um, yeah, it works really great in these kind of, but what I've found is that it really works across the board for almost anything. And I was actually looking at those t-shirts that people submitted for the design or for the printing contest. And there were a handful of them that I think if, if it had half-toned, it would have been like flawless. Because I don't know if you guys saw the graphic for that t-shirt. It's like kind of a steampunky looking thing. And there was these little like curly cues that were in the corners that weren't black in the middle. They were kind of like a darkish, like a, like a grayish almost. Um, and I think if, if it had been half-toned, it would have been like a little bit, done a better job of creating those fades. This is a... Um, a little glow thing. Um, one of the one of the things I'm still kind of working out with the halftone neon glow is you have to make it really, really bright. Like this is like four different glows added to this effect, and I still don't feel like it's quite bright enough for what I want it to do. So I'm still kind of playing with that. But if somebody sends you a graphic that is a neon sign or something like that half tone it, it will work 100% of the time. I've done it for a lot of people before. So, um, one, one more thing I'll show you guys. Let's see, how am I doing on time? I'm good on time. Well, maybe, depends on how many questions you guys have. Beautiful. Um, we are working on a plugin for Photoshop in-house that does half toning and color knockouts. And I will show you that. And then I, we, we do want some testers to test this out. We need some PC testers because most of us all use Macs. But let's take this lovely America one. And you're going to hate me a little bit, but also love me once we release this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's 300 DPI. <laughs> oh, goodness. Black half toner. You can turn off the tutorials, but this says, hey, use the level slider to adjust the half tone amount. Black equals transparent. Cool. Brings up this little thing. I'm going to bring that down, bring the black up a little bit. And it's done. <laughs> so, so, and I, I can't take full credit for that. Um, Phil is one of the uh, video editors, and we were chatting about this at a boot camp, and he's like, I'll figure out how to program it. So Phil's been programming this thing, and uh, so we, just, we need to get some more testers before we feel comfortable, because we don't want to release something that's not going to work. Like, the last thing we want is for you guys to buy something and be like, it doesn't work right, Jeremy. Um, so uh, definitely touch base with me. I'll, I'll have business cards when we're done, but we need a few people that are confident with Photoshop to help us try, kind of try to test this thing. Um, but yeah, super, super uh, beneficial for speeding things up. All right, do we have any questions? Yes? So rather than duplicating to a new layer, could you use a smart layer? 
No, because you have to you have to convert it to grayscale. And bit, bitmap's going to try to flatten everything, so you actually have to do it in a separate file. Because when you go to grayscale it or go to bitmap it, it's going to want to flatten all the layers. So you can't make it just a just a smart layer in that main file. You do have to do it kind of separately. Does that make sense? No, because a smart object goes into a new file in and of itself. Oh, I get, I get what you're saying. Um, I've not tried doing it that way. Um, I will be the first to tell you that there is more than one way to do a lot of things um, in Photoshop. Like I said, I only started using layer masks fairly recently. Um, I will give that a shot, trying using a smart object. Um, my concern with that, uh, especially from our plugin standpoint, is once you start like playing with things within it, it will start to argue with itself sometimes. Um, but I will, I'll look into that and see. Um, I think this is the most straightforward process from maybe a baseline understanding. I, I think a lot of folks, we're trying to kind of make it as easily accessible as possible to the majority of folks. But I, I will, I'll put that on my list. I'll look and see if smart objects would work for that. Other questions? When will you be putting out the, uh, the list of your next upcoming boot camp? So our boot camps are on our website, DTF Superstore, right now. There's one in March and one in April. We usually schedule them about two months out, but we do them once a month in Gilbert. There is talk about doing one at our York, Pennsylvania location, um, but that involves a lot more work. Whereas in Gilbert, I just roll my cart over to the showroom and I teach the class for a couple days. So it's uh, once a month, March, April dates are up there. Um, I think March still has seats available. Uh, April is pretty wide open, but we will do them every month. We haven't, we've only skipped one month in a year of doing them, so. Yes? So your boot camp's only in-house? You don't do them as um, a YouTube video or yeah, online, no, um, because a lot of what we do, like if you guys come, like obviously we're selling Mamaki now. We've we've stopped selling anything else but Mamaki because it's been so, it's been a, just a totally different experience. <laughs> like every one of our customers who use it are just kind of blown away. Um, but if you come to boot camp and let's say you have a Prestige or you have a cold SC machine or you have uh, something else, you have a Cobra Flex, you have whatever, we will talk about all of it. If you got questions on maintenance on your machine, on the i3200, if you have like, you're like, how do you flush a printhead? We had somebody actually bring an i3200 printhead in and we showed in class how to flush it. So we do cover whatever machines you guys are running. Um, a lot of the first day especially is content like this, how to get your files prepped so they print really well. Understanding color, we spent a lot of time talking about like understanding what your capabilities are in CMYK, because I'm sure you all been asked to match a Pantone and it's been a pain in the rear end. Sometimes you can't get every, you can't get every Pantone with CMYK. For those of you who aren't aware, just quick, Pantone is 13 base pigments plus black. Digital printing is three pigments plus black. So there's a handful of stuff that you won't be able to reproduce, but we talk about the whole thing. We really want you guys to understand the full capabilities as well as some of the limitations, because there are certain things, like you've, if you've seen our YouTube stuff, we DTF on really random stuff, like we've done a skateboard, I do, it works, I do not recommend you guys offering that because it takes an eternity to do it. But um, we want you guys to know what you should and shouldn't be offering, that's kind of the things we cover in the class, so. and. For those of you who are wondering, yes, this is DTF'd, and yes, I have a video on it. So, and this is me testing it. I've been using it for about three months to see how it holds up durability-wise. But yeah, if anybody still wants to look at some of those shirts, and if I could get those shirts back, that'd be awesome. I do use them in the training. <laughs> all of a sudden I come and I'm like, where'd all my shirts go? They're gone. Any other questions? That's DTF from that cup? Yeah, thank yeah. you. That's not UV? No, that's DTF. And you did it with the... I did. Yeah. You gotta pass that around. I'm gonna pass it around. You also go. I know you guys. You're gonna scratch it. I'm gonna hand this out, and the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go. Oh, it doesn't hold up very good. <laughs> guys, I know. I don't expect. So. Have we, you washed it? I've hand washed it. I have not 
been brave enough to put in the dishwasher yet, but I will. I promise you I will, and I have a GoPro in my dishwasher to show it washing. Because if something we're doing, it's worth overdoing. So when we did our, we did back to school series where we did a whole bunch of back to school stuff, and this, the water bottle, I literally threw in the mix. I'm like, it's not gonna work. Let's put it in there so we have a couple things that don't actually work. And we pressed it, and it actually stuck. And I'm like, what the heck? And so then I went down this rabbit hole of like figuring out how to make it work, and then I had a video where I'm like, oh, it's not gonna work, and then I figured out some other way. But basically, this was printed on the Mamaki, and I used a mug press, one of the ones where you like kind of squeeze it to wrap it around it. I used that to press it. I did sand it a little bit, just to kind of roughen it up a little bit, and then I sprayed a clear coat on it, just like a Rust-Oleum clear coat from Home Depot. And you will see a couple like little marks on it, um, but I've been using it like a tumbler, like I've dropped it, I've run it into a wall, like all the normal things you do. Um, I will put it in the dishwasher and I will release a video after to, to see if it holds up. If it does hold up well, it actually didn't take very long to do it, so it might be a decent option. But I will let you come look at it if you promise not to scratch it, because I know you all want to, but just withhold the, the, the what is it, the inner, inner thoughts, what is it? Intrusive. Intrusive thoughts, thank you. I'm looking at my daughter, I'm like, she is gonna tell me what that is. Uh, any other questions before we wrap up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I use a PNG. Some RIP softwares don't use PNGs. PDFs and PNGs both have transparency information built into them. I, for whatever reason, am not successful at exporting as PDFs all the time. PDFs always have a white background for me. I don't know, I, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But PNGs, uh, we use Digital Factory 11 at DTF Superstore, and so yeah, I would just export this as a PNG, and then the only thing I would do different in the RIP software is I would reduce my choke down to like two. Normally I'm gonna have a choke of like three or four. Um, I'm gonna reduce it down to two because some of those dots are really small, and some of them won't have white underbase, and you will lose some dots when you peel it. Don't worry about it, it doesn't affect the overall look of it, so. Anything else? Awesome. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I'll grab my business cards and um, yeah, feel free to reach out. Also, if you have random ideas of stuff to test, we are game for testing weird stuff. So we, uh, we, we did one that recently that was trying to DTF on concrete. So that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, at first I thought, that's a silly idea, but then it kind of sounded smart. Why not? I'm not going to tell you how it turned out yet. <laughs> You'll have to go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. If you want to talk more, I'll be down at our booth. Have a great rest of your time.